If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard in Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Voting isn't just going to the polls on Election Day anymore. Options like early voting, mail-in voting, and ballot drop boxes are available to more voters and are growing in popularity. How to Vote, a tool created by Democracy Works, breaks down the options your state offers for casting a ballot, empowering you to decide when and where to vote. Democracy works best when we all vote, but misinformation and confusion about election procedures have resulted in a low voter count turnout. How to Vote, a tool created by Democracy Works, takes the guesswork out of the voting process. Go to Ballot Ready for a nonpartisan guide to your entire ballot. From there, you can compare candidates based on stances, on issues, biographies, and endorsements, and save your choice to use when you vote by mail or in voting booth. You can even request your absentee ballot or make a plan to vote early on Election Day. This election matters. Make sure you have a plan to vote and vote informed. This year, with changes to polling places and vote-by-mail laws as a result of COVID, it is more important than ever to have a plan to vote. Local elected officials affect our lives every day. They decide who to prosecute, monitor, or quality of our drinking water and choices for the leadership of our schools. Third per- 30% of our voters take the time to vote and then leave some part of their ballot blank. This is a missed opportunity to choose the leaders of our communities. It's okay if you're unfamiliar with some of the local positions. We recommend hosting a ballot party. Get together with your friends or over Zoom, split up the research, and go through your ballots together. We are here at the Pro Wrestle Zone podcast. It's Rick. Joining me is the one and only DVD freak, Matthew Tremble. What's happening? I guess it's not the one and only because someone else stole your name on the Instagram, didn't they? Yeah, that fuckhead. But <laughs> the one and only on YouTube. There you so, go. Yeah, there, there's that. And Matthew Tremble is a name I created from scratch. So as far as I know, that's the one and only as well. Oh, all right. It's a, it's a character that I used in one of my outlines that I decided to just kind of take the name for. So. Oh, there you go. It's your stage name. So what's going on today? Oh, nothing much. I uh, worked all day and then got home and went on a Star Wars kick, and here we are. Yeah. Well, like I said beforehand, I've been watching uh, Glow for about – Four hours or so. Uh, the original Glow from the 80s uh, started off by owning, being owned by Dave McLean, who owns WoW, and then Sylvester Stallone's mom bought it and made it into a gigantic Hollywood production type thing and comedy show. It's, uh, you know, it's on Pluto. It's kind of enjoyable and kind of comical and bringing back lots of memories from my childhood. Not very yeah. good, though. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. So we were talking beforehand about autographs uh, and top, uh, was it top five that we wanted or top five that we own? Uh, I figured we could just, instead of top five, just start spouting off ones that we really want. Because I, I can name more than five at this point, now that I'm thinking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there's, there's quite a bit. Uh, yeah. I know um, I had mentioned earlier, prior, prior, that there was one that I, was, uh, that I have seen a couple times. Um, a Chris Benoit autograph, and I saw them for about three hundred dollars, maybe three fifty. And I, at the time, did not. Uh, I didn't know much about authentication and stuff like that at the time that I saw it. Um, but a buddy of mine said that no, it's real because it was actually you know, authenticated. So I didn't really know much about it. But three hundred and fifty. You know, I, I spent a lot of money on autographs since then, so I probably could have just spent the money. And, and got that. So I don't know if I'm ever going to see another one or when I'll see another one. So that's one that I've always wanted. That's probably similar to your own. It's probably going to be pretty hard to uh, come by. 
Yeah, I mean, the Ben Wall one, that's my prize possession. Yeah. And it's retarded how much I actually paid for it. Actually, it was authenticated. I paid 40 bucks for it. That's it? Yeah. Uh, he just didn't want it. He, I don't know. I, I was like, because I saw it, I'm like, there's no way that's real. It's real. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, if I if I saw it for 40, I'd jump on it, no questions asked. Yeah. You know, the guy made a bad name for himself, but it's probably why he got rid of it for forty dollars. To be honest with you, not knowing that it was, uh, you know, I've seen him. My buddy was actually telling me he's a little bit more knowledgeable about the stuff that the Benoits do sell about for three and change. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'd like to get that eventually. So, there's a couple others that I saw uh, not so long ago. Well, one, I wanted a Luthez one, and I saw one. But I wasn't sure if it was real. And the guy that was actually selling it kind of uh, found out in the last like two, three weeks, ripped off a bunch of people or took their time sending stuff out. And so I don't even know if it was actually real. There was no sort of authentication with it or any of that stuff. But if I ever come across one of those, I'd definitely jump on it uh, if there was some sort of proof that it was real. Yeah, uh, that was actually one I was going to name as well, you know, just for... There's people who would say he's the greatest of all time. I know there was a book yeah. published. There was a book published. I think it was the top 50 wrestlers of all time. I'm mm-hmm. not sure who the author was, but they put him at number one. And I, I mean, talk about a pioneer. You know? That guy. Um, if you look at even with MMA, he was kind of a pioneer in that way because he was just a legit badass. And he was just like some. Even back in the day in the 50s, he looked old as hell. Like all this dirt, he was going out there grappling and stuff like that. But he, uh, obviously the NWA trusted him with their belt to keep it on him for as long as they did. So yeah. he's, uh, I've gone back and watched a shit ton of his matches and I really enjoyed him a lot over the years. So yeah, there, there's a lot on YouTube. Yeah. And there's a really good, like mini doc on there too. Uh, probably about a half hour or so. That's really, really good that he's interviewed in. and he didn't seem to be, so upset about opening up about the wrestling business. You know, some of those old timers still kept yeah. kayfabe. Uh, Bruno kept it forever. I don't even know if Bruno ever actually opened up about, you know, it being a work, uh, to be honest with you. Even in his later years, I mean, he kind of just went along with the whole Hall of Fame thing. But, you know, I, it seemed like Lou was definitely open more about that. Well, Bruno, he didn't want to be in the Hall of Fame because he despised the Attitude Era with a passion. Yeah, that's what made him. Uh, one of the things, uh, not before you, I'm sure you, you had something else to say, but I think it was uh, the reason why you get in. Uh, Hunter was actually easing the pavement yeah. to try to help get certain people that should be in the Hall of Fame and guys that had bad relationships with Vince. And I guess that he had a lot to do with getting uh, Bruno and convincing him to, to come in as in you know, make peace with Vince so he can get, because what kind of Hall of Fame do you have for WWE if uh, Bruno San Martino is not in it? Let's be honest here. Yeah, that that's... basically was the face of the company for two decades, just about. Yeah, that's about everything I was going to say. Um, yeah. If it wasn't for Hunter, there would be a lot of people that just would not be included. Um, they wouldn't have the Legends contracts. You know, right. I think um, you need to take care of your... Your legends, your veterans, because yeah. a lot of the times that's their income, just doing signings and, you know, yeah. action figure sales, merchandise. I, got I have a Bruno autograph. That's actually one of the uh, pieces I really love. High Spots has them for like 30 bucks. Legit. Yeah. So yeah. I got mine as I got mine as a gift from Dan. Uh, I, I was very excited when I showed up and I saw what was in that package. It was just amazing to, to have someone of that stature's autograph. It's beautiful, man. So I can't wait to display that when I get to Rome. Yeah, that's um, I'll I'll, have, I'll definitely have to pick that one up because that was another one I was going to mention, and um, it's so cheap because I think I, I talked to somebody about this before. It was either you or Dan, but you know when you have an autograph from you know look at Ric Flair, who to mm-hmm. me is the greatest wrestler of all time. Absolutely, he, he's signed tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of autographs at this point in his life. So mm-hmm. it's so saturated. So you can get them for pretty cheap. Like, I paid 30 bucks for my Ric Flair. How long uh, ago was that? Oh, uh, like a year, year and a half ago. Did you buy it, like, at a signing? 
because I heard that I've heard that he's gone up because he kind of realized his value that it's it's a bit more. No, I don't. I don't really go to signings. I I just okay. I got it from somebody I know who got okay. it at a signing. Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. No, I, I've heard that it's uh, quite a bit more like nowadays. Um, I think when I went to go see, I went to a signing of his, and then I ended up uh, not staying stick around to get his because like it was in a it was in a shopping mall probably 10 15 years ago and the line was atrocious when we got there and so i just said you know what this is not a good idea i'm not waiting in line for two hours to meet flair um and i also heard that he was very unpleasant uh that evening so (laughs) (laughs) that sucks what are you gonna do right yeah (laughs) so yeah i i don't you gotta be really convenient for me to go to a signing like if it's like yeah. two miles down the road i'll go but yeah. I, I just don't feel like standing in line and then they're just like oh what's up sign your shit and then tell you to get out like to me it's just i don't like the whole thing but you know i've, I've gone to a couple signings here recently in uh southington which is about a half an hour from me so i mean uh I went in there and, you know, I met uh, Eric Young recently, who just rejoined TNA, or Impact, rather, what, a couple months back. And he was the nicest dude. Like, he was cool, very conversational. Tommy Rich, the same thing, you know. Uh, the only time I was, like, kind of in and out of there so quick was when it was, like, the Maven, Kurt Hawkins, Brian Myers uh, signing. It's because Brian Myers had just, you know, left WWE, so he's still... I wouldn't say a huge star, but you know, I mean, just fresh off the TV, so people are aware. Yeah. So the line was longer, but I got there. We were first, and they were just kind of rushed through there. Yeah. Um, Steamboat actually, believe it or not, was the that was a sign. That was my most recent signing. That was like a year and a half mm-hmm. ago. So that should show you how often I go to these things. But he had the smallest line I've ever seen. He had probably like two or three people. I was in I, and out. I was in and out of there, no problem. Where like, was this? Was this at like uh, a convention or something? No, it was at a toy shop that's close to me, and yeah, it's a toy shop. I'll just say that. But yeah, he has all sorts of merchandise there. He has a bunch of autographs. He has a bunch mm-hmm. of signed figures for people who collect those. Um, wide array of DVDs. It's like a little flea market, but he has his own corner store. It's really cool. Mm. That's pretty awesome. And That's, um, uh, they had Mick Foley there. I I, I missed that one. I actually would have went to that. But. I've met Mick a couple times. I got uh, I met him back in '94 when he had just left WCW, going to ECW. Um, I remember. So he was still Cactus Jack at the time. I met him in New Jersey at like a uh, the Chiller Theater convention. Okay. And he was very cool back then, and you could tell. And I met him. 25 years later uh, that he was he was Mick but he was still kind of like a different person you can definitely tell he took too many chair shots and uh, <laughs> you know he's just basically there it's like you paid your money here's your autograph like he had all those pictures now I showed you that the the three faces of Foley pictures that I had picture yeah. that I had signed uh, my buddy gave me that and it was um he, he paid for me to go like it was incredible he's like let's go see Foley he's like I, I got two tickets Okay, whatever. No problem. And it was great. It was awesome, though. And I got to thank you, Rick. It was just an amazing time. And going to see his stand-up thing, you know, we're sitting right there. Just incredible. It was like two seats over from us, like, sitting down. And I just, like, that was like, I was like, hey, just incredible. You know, it was yeah. cool to just sit there and just have a conversation with him. I got a picture with him that night. I thought he was cool. He just seemed like he was a different person a little bit, not as uh, friendly as he was the first time I met him 25 years earlier. Yeah. But, I mean, he's still still relatively friendly, you know. Yeah, I, um, I just, I missed it. I didn't yeah. know it was happening. And I went to, I went to Snitsky before that one. Oh, Lord. And he well, was he's actually. From your, he's from your area, though, isn't he? Like down yeah, in he's, PA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he, he, he was Samoans when they were down there. Sorry. Yeah, he was so fucking nice. So, really? yeah. I've heard. I've actually heard that not so long uh, from somebody else recently. Yeah, like he was. We had a conversation because I. He obviously doesn't have like a DVD, so I had him sign Tab of Tuesday, which was his first yeah. pay per view. Right. So he actually appreciated that I yeah. recognized his first pay per view appearance. Yeah. All right. I'm taping. 
Goodbye. <laughs> Cameo? The little guy's trying to get involved. Yeah. <laughs> he wanted a snack, so. I don't know what the hell they just put in my mouth, but anyways, yeah, I mean, I think Snitsky would be a guy that I'd probably meet if he did a signing in the area. Yeah, he was cool. But um, another yeah. big one I want, and I've almost got it a few times, but I wasn't confident enough that it was real, Andre the mm-hmm. Giant. I guess, you know, now that you mention that, that probably one I'd fucking go nuts for. And yeah. I heard that he was a super nice dude, so... Yeah. And that he was very cool with the fr- with the fans, you know. So it's a, it's a good chance that people do. They are out there, you know what I mean. You just gotta find it. Yeah, there was one for two hundred, but I was like, that seems too low. And that just, just that does seem too low. Looking <laughs> yeah. looking looking at it, I, the ink looked too new. It, it was just too mint, so I passed mm-hmm. on it. You know, at that age, the ink should be wearing off. It should be. Yeah. Faded. It looked like it was just signed yesterday. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like I said, I I'm usually pretty good at matching signatures, but his is so easy to fake because it was he would just sign Andre a lot yeah. of times. Yep. So that that's like one of those ones that you you can't match it because it's so easy. It's like Vince's. He has the easiest one to forge ever. What's his? It's literally. It's changed oh. over the years. I can. Show you. I didn't know that Vince actually does signings or you know uh, autographs. Maybe. Oh, I don't know if you can see that too well. No. But this is. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you showed it to me before. Yeah, but his now it's literally just a V and then another line after it because he's very lazy with his autographs. That's interesting. So yeah, his is easy to fake. Like that what's one. His, what's what's his go for? His like oh my he... god I, I I randomly go on eBay and just check random prices. Last time yeah. I checked was about a week ago, and I always okay. see if that I always see if that box set's on because I always like to see what that goes for. But mm-hmm. I've seen his go from two hundred to five thousand at the most. Holy shit! Wow. And yeah, and if you're looking like. Just like JSA authenticated, you're probably looking around four to eight hundred. Holy crap! He might, well, was, he also doesn't sign a lot either. No, but they released a autograph card. It was like one of twenty five. That's the one okay. that's going for like five thousand. Because he doesn't do autograph cards. Mm-hmm. And they released it as a part of this briefcase with like fifty autograph cards. Right. And his, his was in there. It's like gold framed. Um, so yeah, that that one's the five thousand. But yeah, it's his isn't like crazy, but it, it's definitely up there. One of the ones that I'd like to see is like, and I've never seen it, and so obviously it's the um, the odds of finding it are probably pretty fucking odd. With uh, Nature Boy Buddy Rogers is one that I'd love to find, you know. So. I think that one would be an interesting one. God knows how long, how much that would actually even cost. Yeah. So I wasn't, you know, I watched a lot of his older footage from the sixties and up till the end of his career and stuff. So it's not that I'm a huge fan. It's just that well, I'm a fan. You know what I mean? And he started a lot, especially look at like guys like Flair. You know what I mean? Yeah. Flair will tell you that that was the most his favorite wrestler of all time. Um, Gorgeous George is another one that I don't really know how much his goes for. Right, it. and that's another one that it would be impossible mm-hmm. to know if it's real or not. Because so another one that I would probably say is like the Holy Grail rarest wrestling autograph. As far as I know, only one exists: Vincent J. McMahon. Really, Vince's father. I've seen one. That's, in- that's incredible. I've never actually, you know, that's one I never even thought of to yeah. think about. That's incredible. Um, damn, I wonder even how you've seen it or no? Uh, not in person, but Oops. there is um, a store owner. I think it's Wrestling Universe in okay. New York. Yeah, yep. He ha- he has it. It's like very highly safeguarded, but he has it. Fred Outman was just there. Uh, he was posting from there, and I just saw some pictures. Uh, there's a bunch. Of, there's some signings coming up. There. <laughs> There's some signings coming up there so soon. Now, where's that? New York, you said? 
I think it's either New York or New yeah. Jersey, one of those. Right. I, I do want to go there. I'm just going to say, we should all take a trip. Dude, uh, I'm down. One day. The three of us live in the Northeast, so I mean, why the hell not? Mm-hmm. There's also a place out that uh, my friend Eric told me about, um, this place called Zombie Hideout in Springfield, Mass., which um, I guess it's, they have like comic stuff, some other collectibles like that. But apparently they have a ton of wrestling stuff and a bunch of all sorts of wrestling crap there, too. So that's one that one of these days I'm going to have to take a drive up there. So I told Dan I'd pick him up along the way. So, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, Roddy Piper is another big one. That one you could still find. Yeah. Um, you know, they, 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 um, I know that, oh my God, RF, um, still has some, but I don't know, you know, there's been rumors that they're not completely real, but I, I, I have no reason to believe that they're not, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. so. Yeah, my, uh, my friend, the, uh, the indie wrestler friend. Yeah. He has just so many fucking cool autographs because he he worked, he worked with, Pi- with everybody. Yeah. yeah, he worked with Piper the last few months of his life, and he just gave him a WrestleMania one program hand signed. Holy crap! That's and I awesome. got this. He has it in this really cool display case. I'm like, you son of a bitch! Like that's that that itself probably goes for some money without the yeah. signature, you know. But yeah. now it's got the signature. It probably goes for way more, you know. Yeah. So that's incredible. I mean, there's, you know, there's a bunch of other autographs I wouldn't mind having. Uh, as far as ones that's very, you know, relatively easy to get still is uh, Arn Anderson. Uh, you know, he just did a couple signings for high spots. He's got another one coming up. So that's, I don't want to say he's my favorite wrestler because I always say Benoit is my favorite wrestler. Well, you know, it's like they go back and forth between the two. It all depends on. Yeah. Arn is a tremendous wrestler. He was really awesome. But him, at some point, I'm definitely going to just lay out the money. It's, and it doesn't go for much, I think, 20 or $30. So I just need to just say, hey, I'm going on there and getting it, you know? Yeah. I think my number one is Macho Man. Yeah. That's – I was looking at prices yesterday, and I'm just like, yeah, that's not happening anytime soon. What's it go for, roughly? The one I was looking at, um, it's beautiful. It's a card, and it's in a similar case to the Owen one. Mm-hmm. It was four hundred. That's not that bad. No, it's not. But after the Owen one, I can't be buying too much here. So, do you want to reveal what you paid for that, or no? I think I already did. I paid after it was all said and done. It was four hundred, and then That's a little bit of change. Bad. Yeah. A little bit Give me that. That's not that bad. I thought for some reason you were just like, you had me believe and you paid like way more than that. Just like, I think it was your tone that you. Well, uh, it's because I'm a cheap ass. So me too. Me too. Four hundred is like mm-hmm. suicidal at that point. <laughs> if I spent four hundred dollars on something like that, uh, I'd probably you know be sleeping on the couch or in the garage for a while. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know well, well, I was. <laughs> I thought the same thing, but then I showed it to my girlfriend. I'm like, should I get this? She's like, dude, get it. That's awesome. And it, I, I, it, took, that, yeah. it took me more effort to press complete purchase. And she's like, just fucking press it. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I hear you. Give me that. Yeah, I, I, I hear that because it's like, it's once in a while, I'll sit there and go, I'll, you know, you, you, you see something online and you just stare at it. It's like, should I do it? Should I do it? Yeah. Should I do it? And it's just like, you know, I've done that. And then, you know, okay, the money comes out of your account. And then you go look at your account and you're like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> you know, it's like, ah, this, this is a bad way. Then all of a sudden, you know, like, the worst part is when, like, another bill hits and then it just gets, it comes out. And then you look at your account again and you're like, ah, oh, shit. Like, it just wasn't the week. But I, yeah, at that point, it's too late. <laughs> you know? I don't regret it. So. No, that's probably something that you're not going to find. You know, it's not easy to find. Um, I was talking to my buddy Andy. He's done some video footage for, you know, the podcast, for the page. Um, he actually um, found another Owen online, JSA certified as well. So he was thinking about buying it. I don't remember the price, but he just found it. He showed which, it to me today. Which one was it? Because I know of a few that are on there. I'm not entirely certain. I don't okay. I don't remember exactly offhand. Okay. So, but I, I mean, no. 
He was thinking about buying it. <laughs> so. well, what's the mo- what's the most you've ever paid? That's my you know, well, te- technically five hundred's the most I've ever paid for the Vince anthology set. Yeah, but that's kind of a more more than just the autograph. I think you know I don't I don't like to pay more than a certain amount. You know, twenty thirty dollars, and it's me being cheap. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I think one day I splurged and spent forty dollars on something. I mean, this is I'm thinking off the top of my head. I'm sure it's more. Yeah. Um, well, a lot of times I I always uh, I try to find things on coupons. You know what I mean? If you're buying off a site like High Spots or whatever, or you wait for them them to be having a gigantic sale. I actually snagged the Great Muda eight belt. You know, when he had all the belts, I grabbed that uh, for forty dollars. That gigantic poster. Which I was completely shocked that yeah. they offered that for that price. So I jumped on it because Mood is like one of my favorites of all time. He's like definitely in the top 10. Same here. That's one I would love to have. I, I would yeah. want like a classic face paint one. Yeah, yeah. But you know, they were offering this at that price for that particular evening. So I just jumped on it. Yeah, that's and, like stupid cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I've seen other things that they have these like screen printed posters of certain people up on their site. They're like seventy five dollars, you know, and that's them on sale. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like that's not even like the full price. So, you know, there's a bunch of other autographs that I do want. I just, you know, it's all it's all a matter of me just biting the bullet on on them, and, and I'm trying to be frugal now, especially holiday season's coming up. So. Yeah, you know, just throw some ideas towards my family as to what to get me. So you know. Yeah, I always say best there. thing to get. We don't. I don't. I don't really do holidays. So if someone wants to get me something, I'm like, dude, just give me some cash. Like. Yeah. Really. Go ahead and shut the door. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. There's other ones that I want. Like Holden's not one that I would definitely buy. Mm-hmm. You know, but that's one that I probably would accept. You know. Uh, if I found it for a decent price, because he, but I've also heard he authorizes certain people to sign for him as well. Like Jimmy Hart was one person that he authorized to sign for him. So it's like, if I'm not actually getting him to sign it, I don't want, I wouldn't want that. And there was another person that was actually authorized to uh, sign for him as well, but I just can't think of who it was offhand. And, right now. It's funny you mention that because I've looked at so many Hogan autographs. Right. And it's funny you mention that because a lot of the times it looks like he has a few different signatures. Yep. When comparing them, I'm just like, I can't tell if this is real or not. I, mean, I can't yeah. get it, you know. I'm. Yeah. And his, his isn't really that crazy expensive either. Like, I would drop 50 bucks for Hogan. But What's he, What did you see it at? Um, it's usually somewhere around a hundred, maybe a little more if it's certified. But if you're just looking at like a random DVD that's signed, I've seen it go for like cheaper, but yeah. I don't really trust those. So yeah, certified, it goes for a lot, but he does a lot of signings. So yeah, yeah it's think, not uh, as much as I think there was only me. one in my area that I'm aware of in the last 10 or so years. He did one, um, for Northeast Wrestling, he actually showed up, which I thought was pretty interesting. He, he uh, you know, he was one of the guests because they always get like a ton of wrestlers there to sign autographs outside of the talent that they have on there. You know, they have a couple guys that aren't competing. Like, you know, I went to show Mark Henry is there after he retired to sign. There's a couple other people, you know, I met right back. He was kind of a, you know, dick because I didn't want to shill out the money for my kids to to take a picture with him. So I was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we met Jake Hager outside the arena, and he was more than willing to sit, like you know, shake hands and, and talk cool. and, and take pictures. You know yeah. what I mean? Like he, uh, yeah. And I went up to him and thanked him for being cool to my kids. You know what I mean? I know that you know inside the the, the arena they got to charge you whatever twenty or twenty five dollars for the autograph and picture, but he was real cool to my my nephews and my kids that I had with me that night. So. I appreciate that. You know what I mean? He just wasn't a dick. So he was actually one of the nicer people that I met over the years. Believe it or not. I still got those pictures every now and again. I'll repost them anytime they pop up in my memories. Yeah. So. How about, um, how about Eddie? Is that one you'd like really want to get? I would, if I saw it, I would. I'm just afraid to buy it because it's probably one that's relatively goes for a decent amount of money, right? 
Yeah, and that one's extremely hard to fake because his yeah. autograph is so specific. Really? Yeah. Um, I've seen a couple of DVDs pop up here and there that were right that that were signed. Um, trying to remember where one was. I think maybe somebody posted it to the to the Facebook group, um, but I'm not probably in the last four months or so, maybe. I think I posted um, mine on there one time. It might have been yours. Um, yeah. You know, but I know someone else picked one up somewhere. Um, just trying to remember where. And it looked, you know, I want to get one. I definitely want to get one. You know what I mean? That's definitely something that I'm interested in. I know someone that has all four radicals on one magazine. Oh, shit. That's insane. She, uh, I don't know what the hell she paid for it, but it wasn't much. Right. Right. Light. Light. Yeah, I would, um, I'd probably go crazy over that, seriously. Yeah. That'd probably be a couple hundred dollars right there, I would yeah. assume. You know? I think she only paid a hundred bucks. Really? Yeah, that's How? like, that's insane. That is. I mean, considering that, well, Milenko still does signings. Perry Saturn's probably, you know, a little kooky <laughs> these days. <laughs> it's like Ben Juan and Eddie are the ones that are the ones that are hard to get, obviously. So especially on the same item? Yeah. That's like unheard of. Yeah. Absolutely. That's just insane. Yeah. So I mean there's I'm trying to think of something else. I got a Larry Zabisco's. That's always one that I wanted. I always appreciated him and his career. Yeah, I'd like to get a Vern Ganya maybe, because you know, I'm a huge AWA person. Uh I don't know if his son's autographs are out there. You know, not that I'm a huge fan of his kid, but he's not the best. But yeah, I'd probably get one if I saw it for a decent amount of money, ten dollars or whatever, fifteen. But um, one that I'd like to get the Killer Bees. I'd like to get them to sign. I mean, and I'm yeah. sure that I'm sure it's very possible to get it at a relatively affordable price for the for the both of them. Um, Howard Finkel is one I would love to have. That's out there, I think. Did I ever tell yeah. you that my, uncle, that my uncle worked with him? No. He, yeah, he was a Connecticut boy. He worked at um, Marlin Guns, which was, you know, a gun manufacturer here in Walling. Yeah. Well, I live in Hamden, Wallingford's 10 minutes from here, off the highway. Um, my uncle worked there with him in the 70s, and at the time he was working New Haven part-time and then eventually as an usher, the New Haven Arena, then the New Haven Coliseum. And, um, you know, then they would bring him in as a substitute ring announcer at the time because they heard his voice. They liked his voice. And then after that, um, they started bringing him to Madison Square Garden. Now, you know, I wasn't ever sure that my uncle was being 100 percent honest about that, <laughs> you know, but whatever. But his story was actually um, confirmed just this past weekend that he worked there with my uncle by somebody that, you know, I didn't even know worked with my uncle that, you know, that Howard Finkel worked there. I ran into, you know, I work at the record store. There's a guy that came in and he said that he used to work at Marlin Guns and he started talking about Howard Finkel randomly working there. So, wow. You know, so I was like, holy shit, that's pretty incredible. Did um did he say he was like I'm sure he was one of the coolest guys but did he have Dude, like he any... said he was super nice he didn't have any yeah. really many stories because the guy said that he only worked there for a couple of years and that Howard was still working there at the time yeah you know when he left he he basically you know left to form a band and he was like a touring musician when he left uh, working Marlins okay um Jesse Ventura that's another one I'm sure that could happen yeah uh, you know, i've heard that jesse outside of his insanity and conspiracy conspiracy theorist uh politics that i'm sure he he's a relatively easy guy to, to sign like i'm sure he would if if asked yeah. Yeah. you know um surprisingly bobby heenan goes for pretty cheap oh really yeah i saw one for like 40 bucks Recently. That's actually really good. Did you know? I think it was, was it yesterday or today was his birthday? Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, and they showed, I saw some picture of him uh, as a wrestler back in his early days. He had like a black glove on. It was just, yeah, <laughs> he, no matter what he did, he just didn't look tough. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Especially when you're in a weasel outfit. Right, right. <laughs> so I'm trying to think, you know, Freddie Blassie's one, but that might... 
you know, they, they used him a lot. They used him a couple times in the Attitude Era, where they came out and they paid tribute to him. Yeah, he was in a wheelchair at the time. But there might be some out there somewhere. You know, you never know. I'd like to get the NRBQ, not the NRBQ, excuse me. The hell is the album with the pencil neck geek? Is the the the, the video rather with uh, Jesus Christ, him and Andy Kaufman? I'd like mm-hmm. to get that autographed by like you know two of them, the both of them. That would be probably a fucking. That'd be. I'm sure it's out there. I'm sure yeah. somebody's got to own something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I would like that'd probably be insane. Like it'd probably go for a shit ton of money though. I feel like Andy Kaufman alone would just be, yeah, <laughs> break your wallet. Yeah, I mean, how hard? I mean, I don't know. You got to figure like the older these things become, the harder they are to find. You know, certain people just don't understand and hold on to this stuff and keep it in the garage. How many kids don't know what the hell their parents have and throw it out or whatever? You know? Yeah. It, it happens all the time. Yeah, it's. I've seen a lot of autographs just come out of their parents mm-hmm. attic they're like oh yeah i was going through a box and yeah here's a here's an abraham lincoln autograph or a <laughs> babe ruth autograph right. like just you just find these priceless items yeah and just, they're just stored somewhere you never know what you're gonna find yeah I'm trying to think uh oof. i know high spots was selling like a four horseman one and it didn't have every single one I think it was like the Barry Wyndham version, but I'm trying to think of who wasn't on that particular piece. Maybe JJ wasn't on it, JJ Dillon. Or Barry Wyndham might not have been on the picture. He might have been in the picture, but they wasn't signed. But I mean, or no, maybe I think it was Oli was one of the ones that wasn't, uh, had the signature, but I, I don't know if I'd want his autograph anyways. He's a fucking nutbag. But, you know, I'd go for probably some version, not, you know, some version of the earlier versions of the horsemen, you know, not the later periods. I mean, those guys, the later periods, obviously like Ben Malenko, Pillman, those guys would probably, you know, go crazy over, but who the fuck wants like a Mongo one or anything like that? Like bullshit like that. Yeah. I, I remember sending you that uh, four autograph card. It was like a one of one. It was like, Which, yeah. Um, it was the four horsemen. They right. all had their sign, their signature on the same card, and it was like four grand. That's just insane. Which, Which I don't hor- think. That, that's I'm trying worse. to remember. Yeah, that's probably. Oh, no, that's, that's a little way too much. Yeah. One of the, I don't remember who exactly was on it though. Um, I don't either. I'm trying to think. I, I don't remember. Because it was yeah. just something I randomly saw and just sent it to you. Yeah, I don't hunt as much as I uh, probably should, especially on eBay. I was for a while, but some of them just got uh, a little bit, I don't know. It was just hard to tell whether it was real or yeah. some of them just like, oh, these are like fucking trading cards that were, I'm not, you're into cards. I'm not necessarily into cards. I, I get like a lot of 8x10s or prints, you know what I mean? And then the occasional poster or figure, but I was never into figures until somewhat recently I ended up with like three autograph figures I bought, you know. So. Yeah, I just like the cards because they're easy to store. You know, they're small, they're compact, they're yeah, they're guaranteed to be real if they're like top certified. Right. So they're just easy, and they go for pretty cheap for some reason, but yeah. Yeah, I mean... Is there any kind of resale resale value on any of those? I I don't I've never sold an autograph item ever. So I yeah. mean I'm sure I've had people request to buy my shit and I always say no. Like I don't even take offers. I'm like, no, they're not for sale. So I, I get a lot of messages, people asking me, Hey, how much for the Benoit autograph? I'm like, just you're out of your mind. Yeah, I wouldn't you know. I've made the mistake in the past of selling things in the past. You know, uh, with our payment record collections, uh, because I was in need of money. Now, uh, these days, uh, at this day and age, I'm probably like past that. You know, even if I do need money, I was like, none, none of my stuff is for sale. It's in my collection for a reason this time. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I've made that mistake in the past. I don't want to sell any of my autographs. You know, I've got how many different Thunder Rosa autographs? You know, I got a couple of them. 
I've got uh, a couple different pentagons. You know, it's just certain things I just don't want to sell. Uh, one of the pentagons I might because I don't know. I can't decide because I like both the pictures. They're two different pictures, but yeah. I was like, do I really need two different autographs of uh, that guy? Yeah, if I get doubles, I, you know, I will sell them. I have yeah. a, and there's one I have that a lot of people would probably kill for. I have a Becky Lynch. I don't really want it all that much, but that goes for like a hundred dollars. So like really? I might, yeah, she goes for crazy amounts. I've seen, I've seen DVDs she signed for like two or three hundred. And insane. I'm just like, why? Who cares? For a modern, like, for a modern star. Yeah. Kind of, I find that bizarre. But you know, WWE was that last year they started doing the uh, <clears throat> was the some sort of experience thing they call it, and it just turned into them. They're charging like a buck and a quarter for autograph signings with certain with a lot of their guys, which I just think is a lot. Yeah. You know, uh, it, it's like Stone Cold. He charges like a hundred bucks for just an autograph. You can get that, yeah. I've seen high spots have some of their stuff cheaper. You know what I mean? Because they've did signings with them. They were their photo files or whatever. They've had some for like seventy. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't know if uh, they had anything anything cheaper than that. Oh, thanks. You see, my son brought me a Reese coat. So. Oh, there you go. There you go. I he's, mean, sharing his, he's sharing his Halloween candy. If you don't like Reese's Cups, you can just fuck off. That's why yeah, I'll retard. Yeah, like, I don't yeah. think I know anyone that doesn't like them. I was never a gigantic fan, but when they're cold, they're amazing. Oh, yeah. Cool. Okay. Twizzlers? Jesus Christ. This kid's burning <laughs> all the good stuff down. So, anyways, back to the autographs. Um, You know... I'd like to get, you know, one of the ones, you know, and this hasn't been brought up because we, we haven't really talked about these guys ever on the podcast, I don't think. All three of the original Fabio Three Birds together. God, that would be. That'd probably be insane. Buddy Roberts. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think I've ever seen a Buddy Roberts autograph. Terry Gordy, maybe I have. And Michael Hayes, probably the easiest one to get forever because he's he'd been around. You know? Yeah. Even I feel Jimmy, like his was- his will be cheap. Go. Even Jimmy Garvin, you know what I mean? You could find Jimmy Garvin. Actually, my buddy just bought a Jimmy Garvin autograph. It was Jimmy Garvin and Precious. He paid fifteen dollars for both on yes. one picture, which yeah. I think is a really that's a really great price. Well, if we're talking about the Freebirds, I wonder if if there's any in existence of the Von Eric family. Just all of them. You know, Kevin recently did a signing. Uh, he's still alive. He's the yeah. only one. But um, obviously, I'm sure there might be some carries out there. It's the other guys like Chris, Mike, and David that are probably impossible to find. Fritz would probably be pretty expensive as well. Fritz, yeah, but Fritz also he died later on. I think he died in the '90s. So there's a chance you might come across something like that. Yeah. But you know, Kevin, I know I was um. I saw he was doing a signing at some place. I wasn't sure if it was necessarily legit. And then my buddy actually saw the same thing and messaged him saying he'd like to get some sort of autograph. He would pay for it. He would mail him something and then, you know, pay him electronically. And then he basically said, no, no, I'm doing a signing for this company, whatever company that was. So I was like, all right, so it is legit. But I never ordered. So I'd like to get something by him at least. Because I was actually, you know, I'm. Pretty big Von Eric fan at the time. You know, when I was growing up, I loved watching world class wrestling. My buddy, speaking of world class, my buddy just actually, uh, Andy just got a Gary Young, gorgeous Gary Young autograph, who was, you know, relatively big and world class and stuff like that. And um, I was surprised. I didn't even, it was a name you haven't heard in a very long time. I mean, I know he popped up somewhere on Facebook, like uh, commented on something not so long ago, which I thought was, was like, holy shit. And then all of a sudden, you know, he did some autograph signing, virtual autograph signing. So I think it was relatively cheap too. But I would, I think that's one I'd like to get to at some point because you know, I like the oddball guys. Definitely like a lot of the oddball like uh, guys that people don't remember from that era. And for those, they can start cheap. 
Mm-hmm. But, like, if it's an oddball guy, you know, you can get it cheap, but you might be able to sell it for a lot more, you know? Yeah. Down the road, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know. Who's going to remember guys like that? Like, it's, it's just, you know, Gino Hernandez, that's another one that I think would be fucking damn near impossible. If he even signed ever, signed yeah. anything ever, because, you know, he's basically healed basically his whole career, right? I yeah. Think it was, was there a time he was a uh, baby face at all that you're aware of? I think. I, not that I can recall off the top of my head. Yeah. I also heard a rumor, I don't know how true this is, that he was supposed to come to the NWA and be a horseman. Oh, God. During the... I don't know. <sighs> that was the rumor So that, that, that was going around. I don't know how I feel about that. I, 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 I believe that could have been a rumor. Yeah, I, I believe that could have happened. Yeah. I like Gino. I thought he was good. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, I always, and I thought that tag team with him and Chris Adams, the the, dy- the dynamic duo, they were, I thought they were great, you know. Chris Adams is a great wrestler too, and uh, I think there was one out there recently, Chris Adams, and the um, I think the picture looked terrible. So I think that it was like, you know, the, it, it was decent signature, but the the picture didn't look like it. it wasn't necessarily a great picture. So it popped up not so long ago. Another one that I randomly thought of, Chris Candido. Those are around. You know, somebody, I, I saw one on, uh, where was it? eBay. eBay. Somebody sent me a link, actually, not so long ago, probably a few days ago. Uh, I was looking up certain guys, and Candido was one of the guys that he. Oh, uh, how much was that? You know, I don't even remember. I was more shocked that it was actually still in existence. But yeah. I met Candido and had his autograph in 1995. I'm an idiot because, well, I'm an idiot leaving things at my parents' house when I moved out in, oh, like, man. 1997. Now, um, you know, WrestleMania 11 was in Hartford. Yep. We used to have this free fan fest before the event. So we went to the fan fest, and they gave out these programs, and some of them had spots for autographs. We're walking around, and we're just like, holy shit, that's Chris Candido over there. Now, mind you, we had known that he had signed with WWE. He was signed. He was just walking around the fan fest. He was brought in because he was new talent. It yeah. wouldn't debut until, what, a couple months later, maybe? Mm-hmm. But it's him and uh, Tammy Sitch just walking around. We went that's up. Cool. I went up, uh, had a program. He, I was wearing a Sabu shirt to the event. He saw me and just started going like this, you know. This and I was just like, oh shit, you saw me. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. we walked, so we walked up to him and he just signed our, our shit. So I was like, I, I, and he was really cool. He was such a nice dude, and she was as well. But yeah, that was going I've, back 25 years ago. I've heard nothing but good stories with them too. Yeah, um, they were very interactive, very nice with fans. Yeah. Um, you ever have like a really bad experience with a wrestler meeting them? Bad. Um, Kurt Hennig wasn't exactly the nicest human being I when I met that. him. Um, but I've also heard like the complete opposite about people, or about him from people. So mm-hmm. Maybe it was my experience. Maybe it was having a bad day. I think I had an AWA program with me that I brought up to him to get autograph. Of course, he was Mister Perfect at the time, and I wanted to sign the cool Kurt Hennig. So he signed this. He just like you want me to sign this Kurt Hennig? You know what I mean? Like, all kind of annoyed. And I was like, that's who you are here. Like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, and it was just like he signed it and then just, like, gave it to me. It wasn't, like, anything else. Like, no cool Kurt, no Mr. Perfect. Or it was just Kurt Hennig and just like, all right, whatever. I'm trying to think if I had any other bad experiences. Um, I've met a lot of people over the years, you know, but I think that was probably, you know, one of the top ones that I can think of right now. Yeah, I think Matt Hardy's the only one that I've had a bad experience with. But then the next time I met him, he was like as nice as can be. So he was having a bad day. And his ass hairs were twisted or something. You know, yeah, you know, that would ruin the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I've heard, I've heard that he was a very nice guy from people, but you know, he could be moody. You know what I mean? Yeah. At times. Yeah, that, that's I haven't. I've seen a lot of wrestlers, but I haven't met, like, one-on-one too many. Yeah. But, yeah. Like, there's times where I'll just 
like when I went to WrestleMania, they were everywhere, but I didn't really yeah. approach them, you know. Yeah. So I mean, I was in the elevator with Josh Matthews, and I'm just like, oh, cool. Oh, I hate that fucking guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, the worst television commentator on um, yeah. in existence. Like he's just terrible. And it's like every Tuesday night when I watch Impact, I'm tweeting how much I dislike Josh Matthews and. He never even takes the uh, time to tell me to fuck off. Like, you know, <laughs> I don't is know he, if he reads his social media. Is he still with them? Oh, he's, the le- he's apparently he has a huge role there behind the scenes, oh. uh, not just a television commentator. So he's um, the Michael Cole there, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Basically. And his wife, his wife is Madison Rain, right? Is that her? That's his wife? I didn't know, That's he, had, I didn't know he married someone attractive. I didn't uh, think that was possible. Well, guess what? She commentates with him every Tuesday night. She's usually the color commentator. And, oh, Lord, do you want to talk about a terrible team? Like, if you think that he's bad, like, he does this, a lot of unnecessary yelling. <laughs> and and I'm just like, what the hell is going on? And then she just like, okay, she's even more annoying. You know, it's just, it's, it's aggravating to listen to them as a team. Do they have any chemistry? Dude, there's no chemistry and impact whatsoever. And they're like, fucking as far as, in their no. Yeah, well, let me tell you. Who, um, it was the last week of the week before is Bound for Glory, right? Yeah. Because we reviewed Hell in a Cell the next night. So the pre-show had Matt Stryker and Don Callis. And I was like, you know, they were awesome together. But then yeah. they fucking replace it with they take Matt Stryker out after the pre-show and put Josh Matthews in. I'm like, is this a joke? <laughs> it was so it was Don Callis. I mean, Don Callis, when he's got a good sidekick, he's really good. Like if you it's like when him and Matthews together, it's like I don't think that they can they don't have good chemistry. And so it's like so Don Callis sits there like he he just struggles, you know what I mean, trying to work with him. And I think that Matt Stryker's a great commentator. I've seen him commentate not only oh, WWE, man. but he's done like the US uh English uh commentary for uh triple a and a lot of indie stuff like czw he's he's done commentary for for fight during this pandemic so i think he's really good so i don't understand why they just took him off like after that hour pre-show yeah i always like Matt striker and you can tell he's like a fan like he loves yes. he loves doing it whereas josh yeah. matthews i always took it well i always thought he was better because he was in tough enough if you remember yeah <laughs> and he was not a wrestler. So I always right. thought he was just bitter that they put him on commentary. Yeah, and probably. he's never got over that, his small dick syndrome. But <laughs> I, I, he's just, I just, it's his voice. The sound of his voice is just annoying. But you know what? The thing with that is, like, you should be happy you have a nice paying job. Yeah. You'll be holding the stick, interviewing people or whatever. Because yeah. they saw something in you, they just didn't see you as a wrestler. But yeah, something else. I had something to say, but I don't really remember what the hell it was. All right. talking impact, bad commentary. Yeah, something else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I did think of another autograph, but now I just—that's another thing I totally forgot as well. Who the hell it was? Now it's gonna come to me, maybe later or tomorrow. But yeah. do you have a Bret Hart? I know you're a Bret Hart fan. I used to. That's another yeah. one I lost. You know, this oh. book I this book that I had back in uh, 1995 from the WrestleMania 11, I had Jerry Lawler sign it. I'm going to go through the list. Then off the time I had of who I can remember. It's Candido and Tammy, uh, Medusa, well, Alundra Blaze, whatever, Bret Hart, Jerry Lawler, uh, Hillbilly Jim, uh, Bob Holly. That's all I can remember right now. But it was like a book because I had an autograph at the WrestleMania yeah. 11 Fan Fest. Uh, I just I can't think of who else it was. There were so many people that were signed that signed it. Now, mind you, my friend waited in line for like two hours to meet Shawn Michaels. I was like, I'm not. I had wow. no interest. I was like, all right, well, wow. you can do that. I'm gonna walk around because they had a ring set up. I can go play in the ring. Oh, I had Earl Hebner signed it. Um, <laughs> there you go. Thing. He yelled at me and my friend when we got in that ring and actually tried to, you know, wrestle. So, <laughs> <laughs> so to be young and stupid, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're selling yeah. top rope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. 
I'm trying to think of who else, if if there was anybody else. I remember, I really can't think of who else was there. I remember run, running into Piper uh, when I was walking into the building. He was, like, walking out, but he had, like, a bunch of security with him. And he was just like, hey, how's it going? He just kept walking. Um, after the fan fest, me and my buddy went to go leave to get something to eat. And Todd Pettengill standing on the corner next to us. And uh, he was like, hey, it's Todd Pettengill. And he was like, oh, hey, fellas, and just runs across the street. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> oh, and all in that glorious mullet <laughs> so, oh, that he man. had back in the day. That was quite the experience. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't, you know, a dick or anything like that. He was just a goofball, you know. He just, yeah, he was always just kind of innocent. He was always like, there. Yeah, yeah. He was always there. I mean, you know, it's just I think that he was a product. He was suffered from the product because of the weirdness of the new generation. <laughs> you know what I mean? He tried yeah. to. Uh, you know, he had to he had to try to sell a lot of garbage and you know, I actually heard him on Sean Moody's podcast like a year ago and it's like apparently it's like, you know, he's a pretty normal guy. He just he was still working in radio while yeah. working for WWF. He basically was holding two jobs at the time and traveling with <laughs> WWF. So you know, he just sounded like a pretty interesting guy outside of that. And um I think he worked with uh, Michael Cole. Him, I think that's how Michael Cole ended up coming into the WWF. Was yep. through Todd Pettengill. It sounded like. Yeah, so it's his fault. He didn't resign. Yeah. Thanks, Todd. I think that was Michael, <laughs> Michael Cole. That's not even his real name. He gave totally said his real name and just like I'm better known as Michael Cole. I'm like Michael Cole's such a simple sounding name. Like, I always <laughs> thought that was his real name. Nah, it's like wow. something. I'm gonna have to find it and send it to you later. Yeah. I, don't have my com- I don't have my computer in front of me right now. That's interesting. Yeah, it really was. But uh, he was in radio, and he's another one that's probably uh, – he's got the Pat and Gill syndrome. He's not very good either, <laughs> you <No>. know. <laughs> well, he was uh, he was a news reporter, Michael Cole. Yep. That's, why they, that's why Kevin Dunn loves him so much, just because he actually yeah. covered real stuff. Yeah. Like oh. hurricanes and murder. Yeah. And then we can uh, cover the disaster that is the WB. Yeah, speaking of hurricanes and murder, there you go. There you go. Well, it, yeah. it wasn't true. There was Shane Helms and the whole Undertaker and Kane. So there was yeah. some murders, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not making, not making sense right now, but whatever. <laughs> um. Anyways, what else you got? Oh, I think that's kind of, like I said. My number one is Macho Man. I would love Macho Man and Elizabeth on the same. I think oh. that's my ultimate dream autograph. There's two things I should have brought up. Two guys. One of them I probably could have gotten uh, was Billy Robinson, um, old British shooter, and he wrestled for the AWA in the '70s and to the early '80s, and uh, he wrote a book. Before he died, it was probably released two, three years before he died, and I bought it. It was a very good book about the, you know, the snake pit and the whole art of uh, catch as can catch catch as catch can wrestling. Thank you. Took me a while to get it, but it was a really interesting book. But I'm sure like there was like an autograph edition that came out too, and it didn't splurge for that. You know what I mean? Like I just I because I bought it directly from the guy that distributed it, uh, Jake Shannon. I wish I had got that. The other one is Carl Gotch. That's another one I would really like to get. Yeah. Because, so, cause, you know, and that guy's a legend. I doubt there's any out there. Like, I really do. Oh, God. Um, I think that's one of those ones that, like, maybe shows up once a year, you know? <laughs> that's a pretty good. If, if that. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. if you... You're gonna find a majority on eBay at some point, a couple times yeah. a year. But... People are not gonna. People are gonna know they have something special and put it up on eBay. You know yeah. I mean? Especially with guys like that, that there's only like one of, and you know, I don't know. Like Carl, when did he retire? In the '80s and something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, one guy I wouldn't mind is getting like Judo Jean LaBelle too. And I'm sure that that one's. Uh, I'm sure. You know, if I saw him on the street, he'd probably sign because he just seems like that kind of a guy. You know what I mean, Gene LaBelle or yeah. or uh, so was it Danny Hodge? Which is the guy that can crush the apples? Was that Danny Hodge? He can crush the apples with his bare hands. I think that's the guy. He was like an NWA Junior Heavyweight Champion back in the day. 
Uh, Jim Ross used to talk about him all the time when watching the NWA TV. So that's he another did, one. like an amazing amount of strength. Yeah. Who? Jim Ross? Yeah, that's another one I would like. His is probably be, pretty cheap. I'm gonna tell you something. Okay, you ready for this story? Oh boy. All right, so you know how, I sp- and it's nothing against the company because I love the company and they're always top notch. Well, apparently they had a couple Jim Ross autographs for sale on their virtual sale. And they said, okay, tonight only $10. I said, okay. I typed it in because it's a live auction. You have to type in the Facebook comments. And they took my name down, yada, yada. Well, apparently they sent, uh, they oversold the amount that they thought they were going to sell. So they didn't have any. So they emailed people saying, hey, we oversold it, but we have this one. We'll sell it to you and honor that price. Apparently, I didn't see the email come in until way after they had already shipped the stuff. So I missed out, and they just never charged me for it. So I said, oh, sucks. Okay. Yeah. So I remember uh, one of the guys I interviewed on here a while ago, who's also a collector, um, told me that. And I went back and looked in my email, and sure as shit, there was an email. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they'd still honor it. I was like, damn. I was like, yeah, I already got that package. It was like three months ago. So yeah. I was like, fuck it. I'm not going to, you know, but that's one for $10. That would be good. Because I normally sell for more than that. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Before we, one, uh, yeah. before we close this off, is there any like modern ones you want? Like active. Okay. Before I get into that, I just thought of two people that I would like that are probably Probably damn near impossible. At least one of them. Gordon Soley is one that I'd probably oh, love God. to get. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other one is Lance Russell, which I bet there's more out there. Because he only died, what, two, three years ago. So I bet you there's more out there. I don't even think it was that. That was... Was it? I thought was it was it? more recent than that. Maybe a year? Yeah, I was thinking like a year, year and a half, mm-hmm. somewhere around. Because mm-hmm. I remember mm-hmm. I listened to the Jim Cornette's podcast. When he was broken yeah. up about that one. I'm sure, because that's, you know, Lance was commenting, Jim yeah. was just coming up. And that's another one I probably, um, I remember reading about that when I was at work, so I was still in the office at the time. As far as modern guys go, you know, I'm going to have to go with, like, the Street Profits, or, you know. Uh, no, um, sorry. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> um, they could sign their little stupid cups. Yeah, their little solo cups. Um Let's see, modern wrestlers that I would like to have autographs. I'm trying to think of shit, you know, I don't even really watch WWE Prog, so I can't even yeah. think of, like, what's going on there. Um, you know what I don't have, and just kind of modern, kind of, he's been around for 20 years? It's Colt Cabana. Surprisingly, I, I'm a huge Colt fan, and I don't have his autograph. Yeah. Um, really? I mean, the Revival, or... FTR. Yeah. I'd like to get I'd like to get their, you know, autographs um at some point. I'm trying to think of like between any of the shows, you know, uh Oni Lorkin, Danny Birch, I wouldn't mind getting those guys. Those guys I'm a huge fan of. Uh Pete Dunn, Tommaso Ciampa. Yeah. You know, I, I love Tommaso. Uh yeah. Is he think, what's he doing? He's wasn't he injured there? for the longest time? Dude, that guy's got like the uh like, what's like the Hogan syndrome? It's like every time he comes back, he's injured again. Like, like, <laughs> yeah. No offense, no offense to Maso, because the guy did get a fucking nasty neck break, you know. Yeah. So, but I think he got injured again and was out. But he he's coming back and doing stuff. Um. Also for modern guys, Keith Lee. That's another one I'd like to get. Which I'm sure at this point, you know, it's probably going up, considering he's like you know, on the raw roster. Um. Killer Kelly. Cross, you know, I, I probably should have gotten a Killer Cross when I was able to, which I'm sure that I could find if I look, you know. I feel like Keith Lee would be a good investment, because I feel like it's I still think. pretty cheap, and eventually it'll be, like, really coveted. Why, well, like I said, like our previous conversation, uh, what, last week, it, that guy's going to be huge in a year. Yeah. Like, watch, you know, yeah, yeah. and who the hell knows, you know. Yeah. Um. I think as far as, like, modern wrestlers, you know, there's so many good guys out there that I really do appreciate. Buddy Murphy's another one that I really like. Uh, Drew Gulak I like a lot, too. Mm-hmm. Um, Nakamura, I'd like to get his. That one I think you could find online. Oh, I have that one. That's, um... Son of a bitch. 
Yeah, I um, oh, get it out. Yeah, he just has it right out there too. Yeah, yeah. Same and then I have an AJ one with it. I have an AJ one right behind me. Well, yeah, somewhere. Um, one of the other ones is you know I I never got a Cesaro when I was still watching him on the Indies and all the opportunities I probably did have, you know, getting him uh, as Claudio. You know, I probably should have jumped on that at the time, but now look at him. I think I pretty much covered a lot of the guys that I really dig at this present time. But... Uh, I think Okada, that's like the number one. Oh, God, yeah. You can get that on uh, high spots. They got some okay. of them pretty decent, just in case you're unaware. <laughs> So. I I did uh, I did browse high spots uh, last week, pretty uh, yeah. pretty good, and they have really good prices. They really they do. really do. And one of the other things is their virtual sales. They bring out stuff that's like not on the site. They bring out, because they get a whole warehouse of just stuff. They buy collections. They buy stuff. I from, know. Yeah. They buy stuff from promoters. Like they'll bring out like a fucking ring apron. You know what I mean? Or mm-hmm. uh, turnbuckle used turnbuckles from shows. That, you know. And I got a lot of guys that I do like. As far as, I, you know, um, I have, like, a Nick Aldis, that one I love, because, you know, he's, like, one of my favorites. I have a Jeff Cobb. So I was, like, I'm trying to think. Like, those guys I listed, probably it, as far as, like, a lot of modern guys that I would want. Yeah, and the one, the modern ones I do want, I kind of already have. Like, yeah. I have the I have the Finn Balor Collector's Edition UK exclusive. He's on this as well. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. His autograph is just so lazy. Is his lazy really? on yours? Oh, Let me looks, show you. Uh, I'm trying to think which is his over here because I couldn't read it and I had to go back and read the original post to see who it was signed by. I actually had to Google. Me and Dan had to Google it together to to look up his autograph. Yeah, it's just like yeah, this. that's that's up there somewhere. I'd have to yeah. find it. Oh, you got the? Is that? Did you get that signed by him, or did he no. or was that? So, um, the Finn Balor DVD that came out late... It's UK, right? Late last year. There was yeah. a U.S. version, which I also... Okay. If it's, yeah, it's right here. I can compare them. Oh, but, my God. You got everything right at your grasp. Yeah. God damn. All right. Yeah, this is the U.S. version. Oh, Okay. And then the UK, he signed. He did this signing in the UK where he signed a thousand copies. And I was having somebody pick one up for me, but it fell through. So I got this for twenty bucks on online, and it's That's still not bad at all. Still sealed. So um, he signed them and they sealed it, basically. They see, yeah, he signed them and then they sealed it, and basically you can only get them if you were at that event. Holy crap! So. Okay. I I know Relaxing Ghost has one. And that's as far as I know. Maybe 2004 Punk has one as well. I don't know if Mark Boy got it. That guy's got everything, like legitimately, yeah. like yeah. every time. And and you know, uh, he's a he's a good guy. That guy. And every time he starts showing off his collection, I get I kind of get jealous sometimes of yeah. certain things. What he was doing unboxings, you know what I mean? Uh, was that time he what he get like fifty DVDs that were just like I was like holy shit some of yeah. those DVDs I expected to be like a lot of uh, WWE stuff a lot of it was like more oddball and like shoot interviews and then he got some really cool Japanese SWS DVDs yeah. that were you know that were really cool too. Oh, I have a Samoa Joe TNA I have, autograph. I have um, one of those. It does not come for some reason. I got that from High Spots and it doesn't come with a COA. Which I think is odd. It's an art print kind of, but it's an eight by ten. And uh, I forgot. I think I got that in a mystery box from them, like the first time I ordered from them in years. And they and uh, that came, and I was just like, "Holy shit, small jewel autograph!" So mine's probably pretty fucking rare because it's a TNA Bound for Glory. I, I don't remember what year it is. It's I don't have it with me. It's at my mom's house. That's where my TNA collection is. Okay. It's Sting, Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe, Eric wow. Young, and Bobby Roode on one DVD. Holy shit. So, yeah, I don't even know what that would go for. Let so. me ask you, with all your DVDs, do you actually ever watch any of them? Um, I do. 
it's not as often. A lot of people ask me, like, have you watched all your DVDs? Obviously. I mean, do you just say you collect them or they're just there for collection? Or do you actually? I mean, like, I know I got, I very rarely touch the DVDs that I have. Yeah, I have DVDs that have been um, sitting there for months. It's more for collecting at this point. Yep. Because let's say I, you know, I buy a pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. Especially like a modern WWE pay per view. Yeah, I thought I wouldn't necessarily open. Yeah, it. that yeah, that's yeah. completely for p- completionists. But there are some documentaries I have that I can watch over and over again. Like yeah, you know, the Bret Hart doc. Good. You know, just they've done some good ones, like the world class one that was oh, good. Yeah. Um, uh, the uh, the AWA. All right, so I like both of the documentaries. I think the WWE killed it with the documentaries, but there was some stuff that really should have been covered in the AWA, especially like the later period stuff that ended up was basically the reason why the AWA ended up closing, yeah. which they didn't really get into. They were just like talking about all the great times until the late '80s, and then just kind of like dropped off. With the world class one, I thought it was really good, but I also thought that the uh, just the Heroes of World Class DVD that came out that was not associated with WWE. I thought that documentary is better. Yeah. And I, I really liked the Dark Side of the Ring episode on the Von Eric family. That yeah. was that was really good. Yeah. It was great to see uh, Kevin with his sons Marshall and Ross. You know. Yeah, and, he's uh, just walking uh, in the woods chopping up coconuts. You know. Yeah, still barefoot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> swinging from trees like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, All right, my friend, let's wrap it up because well, you got to wake up and go vote tomorrow. But that's about the I won't be. Now. I will be. Um, why don't you tell everybody where they can find the DVD Freak? Uh, DVD Freak on YouTube, on the Instagram, the dot DVD Freak, Twitter, DVD Freak, and um, all that <laughs> crap. Yeah, Facebook. Um, I'm not too active. I just run the wrestling DVD room. If you follow me on social media, you probably don't see me around much. So yeah. you, YouTube, I'm extremely active, though. So that's kind of the best way to get a hold of me. You can find me on YouTube, or us, I should say, on YouTube, Pro Wrestle Zone Podcast. Like, subscribe, share, harass all your friends, family, pets to like, subscribe, share. Uh Social media wise, Instagram and Twitter, the Rick Del Santo. Uh, yeah, Facebook, Rick Del Santo, but I don't really post anything related to the show. So we don't All right, everybody, take care.